Halo DLC. It's no secret to most players that it's never really been handled with much grace or finesse. It's a challenging thing. How do you get players to purchase a DLC, but then allow them to play it for the remaining life cycle of the game? Do you force them to actually have to have it to participate in the playlist? Or does that idea totally not work? Or do you just allow people to have it for free, but no, artists have to get paid and we need money for our time. It's a challenging subject. You want players to participate in DLC. You want them to have access to these newly designed maps with some great artistic uh, elements that have been input through a lot of hard effort and time and money. But ultimately, how do you ensure that players later down the road when the game is old uh, can still play those maps that they spent money on, still get value out of the purchase they put into your game down the road? We're going to talk about the Halo history of DLC, where it went right, where it went wrong, and bring up ideas that can hopefully stir discussion and get ideas from you all, as well as my own ideas on what can ensure a healthy future for Halo DLC. Let me be articulate here. We're talking about map packs in specific. Yes, they have offered DLC in the form of avatars and profile pictures and other goodies, but in terms of in-game downloadable content, Halo has given us map packs. Map packs are sets of additional multiplayer and firefight maps that are not included with the original game. They give the developer the opportunity to put more maps into the player's hands, and for the most part, these have all been multiplayer. This has just been revolving around the multiplayer. I'm kind of excluding Firefight from what we're talking about today because it only makes a brief appearance. Let's look back at Halo CE. No, no DLC for Halo CE. Yes, on the PC version, you can download a slew of great user-created maps, and, and the PC version does have a lot of mod ability at this point, so if you're interested in that, go ahead, go on it. Let's get into Halo 2. Halo 2 began with what was known as the Bonus Map Pack, and this was released April 25th, 2005, almost 10 years ago. That is insane. And this was a free download. These were two free maps, and it was sponsored by Mountain Dew. This is something I want to point out that's critical. It was free. The very first two maps to get players uh, it, right in the idea to teach them what a DLC was, was free. And directly following this, the Killtacular Map Pack was released same day, and it was $5. $5. So April 25th, 2005, you had the bonus map pack release. This was sponsored by Mountain Dew. Two free maps, Containment and Warlock. And then the Killtacular map pack, the $5 one, had Sanctuary and Turf within it. Now, Sanctuary is one of the most iconic and famous Halo maps ever, and it was in the very first paid DLC. Halo 2 did a very good job with its DLCs, and I'll explain why at the very end. Let's finish with the next two packs. Two months later, you had the Maptacular pack coming out. This was the largest DLC for Halo 2. It had five maps within it and was $12. And then two years later, you had the Blastacular map pack showing up with two more maps for $4. So all in all, three paid DLCs and two free maps that were included. And the whole uh, series started out with those free maps within the bonus map pack, which is great. Now, why did Halo 2 DLC work so well? Two months, about two months, for all three of the paid DLC map packs, those maps were made permanently free two months after release. So players who were buying the maps were buying them, having early access to them. And then everybody in the playlist was able to purchase and play those maps for free two months down the road. It was a little bit longer for the Blastacular map pack because there were some glitches that were found up and they did a re-release. But the point is still there, that down the road, the maps were made permanently free for all players. That way they could be enjoyed by the entire population base. I think this is an extremely smart idea if the company can afford it. Now, the argument against it is, hey, these map packs cost us a lot of resources and time, and we can't continue producing map packs if this you know model doesn't work and doesn't pay if we don't have enough people who purchase it early enough who want that value before their friends who want their value before other people i mean this is before youtube was even big everyone like people on youtube do anything to get games early look at the hearthstone beta key like clawing people going nuts to try and get access to games before they're out so they can make content before anyone else does if you were to implement this model now i think it would work significantly well because then you'd still have players that were doing things like buying the map packs early and getting added benefits and then still people who didn't buy the maps can still participate in the playlist and experience this content. Unfortunately, I don't think this model worked because Halo 3 didn't actually opt to do this other than one map pack. So let's go through it. You had the heroic map pack in Halo 3, the legendary map pack, and the mythic map pack. And they all released for 800 Microsoft points. That's $10 for people who don't deal in Microsoft jargon. And when they came out, they were that price point. And over time, things would shift with each of the packs. So the heroic map pack came out in December for $10, but it was made completely free 
three months later in March, and they said this was due to it being not very popular. The Heroic Map Pack did not sell very well. It had some Forge Palette stuff and a few maps, but it, it really didn't do as well as the other two. The Legendary Map Pack released in April uh, the following year, and it was $10 when it came out, and then they lowered the price down to 600 Microsoft points, so you're looking closer to like five and a half bucks, something like that. And then finally, it was reduced to 160 Microsoft points, so you're looking at something really cheap from $10 all the way down to probably about that $2 price range and that is an option that definitely can happen with halo dlc i think it's actually a good one you know buy now full price play later it's going to be a reduced cost but it is going to be required to play in certain playlists finally the mythic map pack was released it was two installments and this was released at 800 microsoft points ten dollars and eventually the price was dropped to 400 microsoft points and these price drops happen about three months off it depends uh you know you're looking basically below six months and above two months for these price reductions to happen and it kind of worked well like halo 3 most of my friends have dlc whenever i do game nights or anytime i do streaming it was pretty much required because we were going to play btb and you needed to have map packs to play in the btb playlist if we didn't want to just play the casual team slayer all night halo reach is a bit of a tricky one because mm, for the most part their dlc's completely failed including the anniversary map pack which okay hold on hold your horses guys just wait the Noble Map Pack comes out, the Defiant Map Pack comes out, both $10. No price reduction ever, and you see it being probably some of the least played, least explored, and least known about content within the Halo DLC sphere. No joke, these maps tanked. The events, I remember at the time, were just not doing any justice for a game that people had already moved on from. MLG was already moving past Halo at this point, and it was too late and too little, and the DLCs were spaced so far apart we're talking six months and they just were maps that did not suit the game they weren't small they just didn't hit the mark for the most part then you have the anniversary map pack something i hold very near and dear to my heart this is one of my favorite things in all of halo was halo combat evolved anniversary or you could just buy the map packs and these were basically um reach engine Halo CE remade maps with different reach settings, and it was amazingly fun. It was released for 1,200 Microsoft points, which is kind of expensive for a map pack code. And Halo CE only, like CEA, excuse me, only sold 2 million copies, which is uh, very small in com like compared to the larger grand scheme of things. And that doesn't include the DLC numbers, but for the most part, the playlist size of the anniversary map pack is extremely small and it's just absolutely nothing now. There were no price reductions though, that's something I want to point out. Then we move on to Halo 4, which had the Crimson Map Pack, the Majestic Map Pack, and the Castle Map Pack. All of these were included if you bought the War Games Map Pass at the beginning of the Halo life cycle. And these were $10 each, and they were released December, February, and April. So you're looking at about two month time gap in between each. When the game came, or when these DLCs would come out, you'd have a DLC specific playlist that lasted about a week or two for each of them, and then they sort of drifted away. And this is the ultimate difficulty that is a small population Halo game and DLCs that don't see price reductions, don't see going free down the road, and just aren't required to play in the playlist. Halo 4 tried for like two weeks to make DLC required for Team Slayer. And you know what happened? Team Slayer tanked. It went from one of the top three playlists in the game all the way to the bottom three playlist. It was very sad to see, and it was ultimately a huge failure, and they <laughs> went back and they changed it, and it's no longer a DLC-only map. They tried a DLC-only playlist. They tried it. It totally did not work, and so they've probably got some fuel for their next game. Now we come into the last DLC of Halo 4, and what I think is the absolute best model, the biggest home run they hit out of all of them, the best value for my dollar, and that was the Champions Bundle. Now, the Champions Bundle is comprised of a few things. The Bullseye Pack, which contained Pitfall and Vertigo, and that was just six bucks, okay? You could, you could just buy the maps if you wanted the maps. Or you could buy the bundle, which was $10, and that gave you the bullseye pack, the maps. It gave you skins for your weapons, the Steel Series skins. So you got a bunch of weapon skins. You got three armor sets for your Spartan. You got a ton of stances and a bunch of extra goodies. Armor skins and access to the Ricochet playlist early before everybody else could get in there. And the weapon skins are the best, far and away the best, out of any weapon skins that were in Halo 4. It's a huge critique, the lack of like weapon skins within Halo 4. I've seen so many fan-made ones that just blow me away and 
The Champions DLC bundles scratched the surface and finally showed me, gave me hope at the end of the tunnel for Halo DLC. I am so displeased with the $30 or $25 I spent on the War Games map pass because I only get to play like one or two of those maps. And it's unfortunate because I loved those maps. They were pretty. The resources that went into them are phenomenal. I mean, there's ships flying on the map. There's really gorgeous volcanoes exploding, all sorts of nice things. But I haven't been able to play 90% of those maps. 90% of my value that I put into supporting the game, I don't get to use. Whereas I'll buy a bundle all day long if it includes things that are cosmetic benefits like weapon skins, new armor, things that I can show off in game regardless of the maps. And perhaps that's the way to do it because here's my ideas. I don't think you can go free. In an ideal world, DLCs, you buy it day one, you have to pay full price. Two months later, three months later, it's free for the population and it's required for the playlist. That is an ideal world. Will that happen? Most likely no. Let's look at the Halo 3 way they did it price reductions. This is an okay idea, but at the same time, I don't know if this is even feasible. With the amount of time and effort that are going into new DLCs, just the amount of money game development is these days, it probably is still a hit for the developer. So if this is not possible, if price reductions are not possible, then I guess the bundle package way is the best way to do it. If you include some armor skins, some visor skins, some weapon skins, and cosmetic benefits with the maps, I will buy it outright. I, I've said this from the very start. If Halo 4 had microtransactions for weapon skins, I would do that. Gears of War 3 had beautiful weapon skins. You had to pay for them, but I would gladly do that because I like supporting games I enjoy, and cosmetic benefits are things that are worth it. As long as it's not overpriced, I'm okay with it. In League of Legends, I have never owned a skin I've been regretful. I've never felt like my five or 10 bucks towards a skin has been misused or wasted or something that I didn't actually appreciate. And the same thing is true with Halo. If the new map packs had a choice of like five different skins that you could pick out and there's five different flavors, the gold, the blue, the green, the blank, and you picked, oh, I want that blue BR. So I'm going to buy the blue BR bundle. It's going to give me the new maps. I'm going to be able to participate in this playlist before everybody else. Cool. Let's do that. And like, ultimately, I would love to see it where the playlists are required to have the DLC, but only if the maps are made free down the road or if there's price reductions down the road, significant ones. It's a hard subject and I don't have an actual answer that I can tell you guys, this is how you solve the issue of Halo DLC, but I do know that the first three map packs in Halo 4 were an utter, utter waste, an utter disappointment for me that I can't play those maps, and I'm probably never going to be able to play those maps again, which is a shame and it's unfortunate. Some of the earlier Halos skirted around these issues differently, but in this business world, in this climate, is that possible? And I'm curious to know what you guys think. This is my opinion. Shocker. Oh my gosh. A video with my opinion. But I want to know what you think can be done to solve the Halo DLC debacle. Do you think my idea of putting cosmetic benefits in with map packs is a good idea? Do you think maps should just be free and they only make DLCs about cosmetic benefits or about in-game things that are not maps? It's all valid and they're all great ideas. I just want to see well fleshed out, you know, thoughts towards how to fix this issue. It's not easy. Definitely isn't. If it was, I'd say do it like COD does. But COD has a marketing budget and, and a plan that just doesn't really fit the Halo thing. So in my mind, what I'd like to see, bundles, cosmetics, microtransactions, make the maps required over time and have a price reduction. If that's impossible, so be it. But we know that the current way can't go on. You all have a good day. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. It's BBK Dragoon and I'm out.